All right, so let's say that we wanted to take the region bounded by these graphs and let's revolve them about the line x equals 2. So about x equals 2. All right, so the N-shaped graph, I mean, you can figure out the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts by letting y equal 0 and x equal 0. Um, if you let x equal 0 to find the y-intercepts, y equals 1, so we know it's going to cross at y equals 1. Let's say that's right here. Um, if you let y equal 0 to find the x-intercepts, that's a little bit more complicated, so... Um, either you would need to use some type of technology to do that or you'd have to get really lucky with some X and Y values but you can see that as X gets bigger here as X gets larger the Y is going to get larger so what that means is even if X is 0 we know that it crosses here well, if x goes up by 1, that's going to be a bigger number. If x goes up to 2, that's going to be a bigger number. So it's never going to cross the x-axis over here. All right? It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not going to be a U-shaped graph. It probably, you know, I'm just going to give a rough guess here. It probably goes down something like that. But you don't need that side, so it, it really doesn't matter. You just need the right side because of these other equations. All right, so y equals 1. We go to where y equals 1, that was right here, and draw a horizontal line. x equals 1, well, let's say x equals 1 about right here, I'm going to put x equals 2 about right here. Here's x equals 1 here. And then x equals 2 is right here. All right, so the bounded region is going to be uh, this region in here. So we're wanting to take this region in here, and we're wanting to revolve it about x equals 2. And remember, this line is x equals 2, this vertical line. So... With a vertical axis of revolution, we still want y equals x. It's good. That's the way our equations already are. Um, so I'm going to be making vertical, I'm going to use vertical rectangles, and I'm going to revolve those about this line. So I'm just going to kind of give you a rough sketch of what that would look like. You'd have, you know, Let's see, it's got to be that distance plus a little bit more. So let's go over just a little bit more. Now, so I would be making shells. That's just what one of those shells would look like, something like that, if we could see through the front of it. Okay? Now, remember, the radius that we come up with for this particular one, it's going to have to be from this on the x all the way to the center. So we need to be able to get that whenever we plug in our equation. If I was just to use the x as my radius, just this x value, then I would just get this distance right here. So whatever x that is, if I just use that value, I'm going to get that distance for my radius, and that's not right. We want to say, how many units was it out here to the center? 2. That's the line. x equals 2. We want to say 2 minus whatever x we're at, and that will give you the distance here. So the average radius, the P of x, is 2 minus x. That will give me the distance from here to here. Saying 2 minus x. Alright. The height of each rectangle, h of x. Alright. The bottom of the rectangle 
is not y equals zero, is it? The bottom of each rectangle is y equals what? One. Everybody see that? This because remember we bound this thing by y equals one. So before on our previous problem, or two problems ago, I told you the height is kind of like just this line. I guess it was the, the previous one. No, it was this one. Was this line minus y equals zero. Even though we don't say that in the problem, that's how you get the height. The top curve minus the bottom curve. We have to do the same thing here because we're missing a space. We're missing a piece right here. You're missing all of this. So you have to say the top curve, whatever curve this is, minus the bottom curve. That's going to give you the height. The top minus the bottom. So the top curve was x cubed plus x plus 1. The bottom curve here was y equals 1. So you have to subtract that 1. So your, your height is going to be x cubed plus x plus 1 minus 1. So just x cubed plus x is going to be your height. All right, and so to find the volume, this is 2 pi times the integral of, now we're using x values, all right? So look at the shaded region, and what are its x values? Here's the shaded region here. What are the x values? 0 to 1, same as before. It's not 0 to 2. If I go 0 to 2, then I'm including all this stuff in here. It's just 0 to 1. All right. And then my average radius is 2 minus x. That's how you get the radius at any point. You have to say the fixed value of 2 minus whichever x you're at times the height of each one of the rectangles. The height is x cubed plus x. And then the width of each one of those rectangles is dx. So we need to fold this out. So that's 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of, fold this out, that's 2x cubed plus 2x minus x to the fourth minus x squared dx. I don't see any like terms. You might want to go ahead and just arrange those from biggest power to smallest power. Um, I'll do it one more time and, and arrange those from largest to smallest power. So it'll be negative x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2x dx. And that's from 0 to 1. So 2 pi times, that's negative x to the fifth over 5, plus 2x to the fourth over 4, minus x to the third over 3, plus, that's 2x squared over 2. You can see that cancels out there. Right there, that cancels out and gives me 1 half. And I'm evaluating from 0 to 1. All right, so that's 2 pi times, plug in a 1, that's going to be negative 1 fifth <clears throat> plus 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 minus, and when I plug in a 0, I'll get 0, 0, 0, 0. So minus zero. All right, so that's going to be two pi times. Got to get a common denominator. It looks like that common denominator could be thirty. So that would be negative six plus fifteen minus ten plus 
what? 30. All right, so that's 45 minus 16. Too big for me to calculate in my head, even though it's not very big at all. All right, 29 over 30. Um, you got to say 2 by times that, so that would cancel out. We get 29 pi over 15 as our volume. So with the shell method, you don't have to do anything with the average radius as long as you're revolving about the y or about the x. But if you're revolving about something that's not one of the axes, then you have to be careful and make sure that you adjust. So this problem, we're revolving about x equals 2. So to get the radius of any rectangle that I revolve, I have to say I have to say the 2 minus whatever x I'm at, and that will give me the radius. All right? So as long as you're just revolving about the x or about the y, you're not going to have to do that. Um, also, the height, make sure that your height of each rectangle uh, is bound top minus the bottom. If this would have went all the way to the x-axis, then it would just be the top minus 0. But it didn't. It just went to y equals 1. So if, say, the top curve which is y equals x cubed plus x plus 1 minus the bottom curve and the bottom curve was 1. So that's why I said I had to say minus 1 so that I could get the height of each rectangle. 